Good morning. Welcome to Presence of Light with Charlie Riverman Bergeron. And I welcome you all to um, this beautiful morning and a talk on listening. And uh, as you see in the above um, opening statement, I posted what I wrote this morning regarding listening. But the journey began during the week. Good morning, Aliyah. As I found myself um, wanting to listen deeper to, to something, and I, I didn't understand what. And yet the theme carried out through the week until yesterday, when I pulled a, a, a couple of cards, um, uh, and I can't remember the name of the card deck, um, but it was a gift from a dear friend in Australia. Liz, if you're listening, thank you. I love these cards. And uh, two came out at the same time, uh, loving words and listen. And as I read their uh, messages, I realized that I don't listen to the loving words as deeply as I could. And it doesn't mean I don't listen, I do. But I find that sometimes <clears throat> the non-loving words that we listen to are the ones that seem to hit us the deepest. And they become um, an object of fragmentation in <clears throat> our own loving of ourselves and loving of each other. So as my journey continued um, in a conversation with uh, Karina Shaha yesterday, uh, we talked about harmonic resonance and sound and how um, she's such a gifted um, person, but she, the understanding of a choir and the, the voices harmonizing and bringing forth a resonance that's deeper than the message of perhaps the words of the song. And so it, it made me think even deeper on how when we try to speak in harmony and, and balance, we raise the frequency for everyone. And the issue then becomes one of listening. Do people listen to it or do they just hear it? And so there are many schools of thought on healing or uh, hearing versus um, listening, and I'm, I'm not here to, to, to lecture on it per se, but just make us consciously aware that when we hear something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not affecting us. Because everything in our sensory perception, hearing, feeling, tasting, smelling, etc., affects us. And we have learned to dismiss what we're hearing. And in that process, we've stopped listening on a level which is really critical to our becoming who we truly are in expressing that in this third dimensional shift and uh, evolution. So a couple of the things that were interesting were um, hearing, uh, I just put words don't hear us, hearing was noticing. When we hear something, it, it catches our attention. And, and whether we're consciously listening or not, we are receiving that information or that sound frequency. Um, just like I'll play this bowl. And whether you're consciously thinking about the tonal quality or how it's affecting your body, 
you're hearing it. And yet, in that hearing, that is going right to your crown chakra and affecting it, whether you are consciously aware of that or not. And if you, when, like with crystal bowls or any sound frequency for healing, if you truly listen, what you're doing is sinking to a deeper level of awareness. And so healing, hearing, morning Barbie, welcome from Colorado. Healing and hearing, if you look at the word, is only one letter difference. So in hearing something, there can be healing if you listen but you don't get it if you do not really truly listen and listening is actually an active tuning to the frequency of whatever that sound or that vibration or that information is so many of us um, talk with or have guides who speak with us. We communicate with angels. We communicate with animals. We communicate with all different things that over our lifetimes we've told that that's silly and that's ridiculous. There's no scientific proof, blah, blah, blah. And we've ignored it. And, and in this result, we've become more highly sensitive to everything that's going on around us. And as you look through the world today, and in the shifting and the evolution of consciousness and the evolution of uh, planetary consciousness, not just human consciousness, galactic consciousness, we see that so many people walk around as if they're zombies, that they're just immune to this. Um, when you talk to them about what you're feeling or expressing, they look at you as if you're, oh, what, where did you just come from? And the reason is because they're they're hearing all of this but they're not listening their ability to listen to actively tune in to what's going on around them has been diminished so here listening is is basically an observation it's a it's an active participant it's a yeah, participant, act, active participant, <laughs> whatever it is, we have to be part of that. We, we, you know, we can hear all kinds of things. We have birds, you know, all noises. We, you know, most of the stuff we hear annoys the living daylights out of us. But until we stop and truly observe what we're listening, what we're hearing, and drop into listening and an open mind and an open heart without judgment, it, it's hard for us to really. Um, get the true frequency and message that's being given to us. Once we tap into that, we can then calibrate and harmonize what is what's coming in through our ears and our sensory perception and utilize that to uh, manifest positive actions and reactions instead of uh, trying to hide away from this noise and so the word noise came came up and that's when we talk about when i the card was loving loving words when we're we're speaking non-loving words it's noise it's chatter it's uh, aggravating and yet we've become so attuned to listening to it in our news and our TVs and our, from our, you know, world leaders, etc., that we become almost uh, dumb to it. Uh, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't register anymore to what we think is our conscious awareness, but it does. And it, and it, it sits deep within us as this heaviness as this um, density and polarity that we just, we can't sense, but we know it exists. And it triggers a lot of um, behavior in us that is really unsavory. And it's a nice word, thank you. Unsavory, not tasty at all. It's not, 
it's not what we want to really, we really wouldn't want to say that, but we do anyway. And we wouldn't want to react, but we do anyway. So what this not hearing or this not listening um, does is puts us into sort of a, a mode of automation and we start becoming more reactionary than intentionally active in the world around us. And it starts within us. And when we depreciate the value of ourselves because of this, we start to depreciate the value of everything around us and the people in our lives and the wonder in our lives becomes uh, not seen. And so it affects all of our senses, all of our sensory perception. And so I, I found this morning, there was um, several articles, but uh, this one was cute. It was listening and hearing and the G's were left off. And it was appreciative listening is when you listen for enjoyment, music, you know, nature. Discriminative listening is focusing on one sound in a noisy en environment. Empathic listening is being sensitive to what others say, feeling free to talk about anything without judgment. And critical listening is evaluating what is being heard and deciding if it is logical or if the message has value. So you see what we take for granted as hearing and listening has a much deeper syntax to it. Uh, if that's the correct word, I don't know. It's just coming through, but it has a deeper syntax to it in the fact that it provides us with many different avenues of interaction. And we have learned to just take it for granted. And when we're young and feisty we want to and feeling the anger in ourselves we listen to heavy metal and death metal ah! and then when we're older and we want you know com you know compassion and love we listen to you know more classical music or new age music uh, when we want healing we listen to music that has more resonance with the solfeggio um, frequencies it's a critical part of our life that we've taken for granted. And part of my talks is really about how do we return to fully embrace the divine beings we are. Uh, good morning, Nancy, and thank you. The, the issue that it's hand right now is we are being bombarded if there was a war going on in the world today, it's the world, it's the war of noise. And you can think of that in any array of um, beingness. Even the noises that we can't hear, the subliminal electromagnetic fields, the geopathic stress, all of this creates a frequency that we are hearing on some level. Maybe not so much with our ears, but our whole electromagnetic field of body is receiving this. And so when you look around and you say, why is everybody off the charts? Why am I off the charts? Hello? Because I'm hearing all of this chatter, all of this chaos, chaos, has a sound frequency. And right now it's loud. Loud and in your face. And so what happens is, how do you change that? First of all, is become aware, is, is awareness, is to become aware of how it's affecting you. Um, then learn where it's affecting you. Where do you go that it's more, you notice it more than somewhere else? And in those moments, then 
readapt and say, I'm going to tune this out. And so it's like turning the dial on the radio. Although, does anybody do that anymore? I, everything's electronic. So, you know, in the old days, we had a radio with a knob and you turned it. And you, you'd go and you'd hear the chatter and the sound and the noise. And then you'd get, ooh, here's a song. And it was weak. And it was weak and we'd listen to it. But it was frustrating to listen to because it was just annoying to try. And then we'd get a station that was nice and loud and clear. And we'd hang out with that frequency. This is what listening and hearing is all about. It's tuning into the frequency of you. As without, so within. We need to start tapping into the frequency that we're emitting. What are we sending out? To the world because what we're sending out to the world is what they're hearing much like this show what am i sending out what am i putting out here um and i and you know this is why i love to do this show because it's 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 teaching me something um deeper about myself and awakening me on levels that i never would have experienced had i not showed up to be here and do this um and so thank you lazarus um you're speaking i'm trying to read the sideboard today i'm, I'm getting more comfortable and i'm uh, accepting my inner child a little more so i'm taking myself off the uh you know list of you gotta do this you gotta do that um and thank you lazarus for for tuning in um Again, tuning in, tuning in, changing the dial, finding the frequency, listening, hearing, not just hearing, but listening deeper and, and, and resonating within your own frequency. We all carry a sound vibration, whether we're aware of it or not. And sometimes when you walk into a room um, and people turn, they may hear you, but they don't register it as hearing you, but they're registering your frequency. We all have, you know, a sound vibration, a smell. We have a different uh, radiation of energy. And all of our senses pick up on this. We're becoming so extrasensory. And it's critical that we pay attention to all of them. Which brings me to loving words. When we speak loving words, for many of us, it's uncomfortable sometimes to let them out. And that deals with trust. Because many times in our lives, when we've expressed ourselves from that deeper heart resonance, unspoken loving and kind manners, we were taken as not being serious or, oh, this is person is in the male world or, you know, it can be any world. This person is a, a wimp or not manly, or this person is, you know, just a, a, a mush and has no uh, meaning and, isn't it sad? Isn't it sad that we've been taught and told that speaking in a loving and kind manner to each other is a fault? And so here again, we've been hearing these words. We've been hearing these philosophies. We've been hearing these doctrines, which continually have perpetuated our not being the truth of who we are. Listening, deeper listening, critical listening, empathic listening is what's needed to sit and listen to yourself and how you feel and how you perceive life. 
And even if you don't speak it to anyone else, it becomes a critical part of our uh, journey to start to recognize it and ask ourselves, is it something that is, has a value? And if so, what is that value? And is that value something that I want to bring into a new awareness, a new consciousness, a new earth? Or is it something that should be best left behind? It served me, it served, served me as I didn't understand the fullness of what it was doing to me, but it's now become a hindrance in my progression forward because we're all evolving. Nothing is not evolving. Ev evolution is the nature of consciousness. It's, it's a deeper resonance that continually evolves. And we can't be separate from it. It's impossible. And once we understand that, we have to make a choice. Do we cross this river or... Do I cross over the bridge? Do I make this leap of faith and, and step into this newness of myself? Or do I hang on with claw and nail to what used to be? And obviously, I don't want to hear myself. <laughs> I use these to block out extraneous sound, so that's... <laughs> uh, Anyway, this is where we're at, is listening um, to deeper uh, messages from the self. There's no sorries here, Lazarus. Working with cock on your hands, bless you. You're working, you're, you're at your trade. Whatever you're doing, I bless it and I bless you. Thank you for being present. It's, it's about this. It's about honoring who we are no matter what we're doing. Whether we're at work, whether we're playing, whether we're talking on a live show, whether we're in bed at night and, and just in our prayerful mode and questioning life. Listen. Listen deeper. Listen deeper and listen with an open heart and an open mind and be ready to receive amazing information that sometimes will be very unsettling when it when you f first approaches you because it may shatter everything that um, you've held dear for a long time And when that happens, then you have to ask for help. And it brings up this trust issue. Who do you, who do you trust? And look for somebody who's listening. Look for somebody else who's listening and hearing these fine tunings that are coming from their higher selves, their higher dimensions of self. Because they're going to be closer to the truth than what you hear from the general public, from the scientific community. And I'm not touting, I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just saying they're held to an old program, an old paradigm. And they, their issue is they're being told to let go as well. And they're, and, and they're struggling with that because their whole life, Everything that they has, has ever been important to them is wrapped up in this concept. And when we hear this new information, it can be earth shattering. But it's not soul shattering. 
And here's in the last five minutes, the, the sort of the message that I get from listening. And at the top of the page, I, I wrote it out so you can make a copy of it. But this is what I wrote this morning. And it was after reading uh, a note from um, Natalie Glasson, uh, a woman that I admire for her channeling of information. Uh, and I adapted it, not it, I, I held her thought in myself and then I allowed myself to speak about um, listening. And the message is as follows. It's, it's really an affirmation rather than a message. I will learn to differentiate between hearing and listening. And I will attune to all aspects of my conscious creator self, all that I am. And I'm not even fully aware of yet without judgment or criticism. That's a tough one. Sometimes I will learn to flow with what are the deeper resonating tones. This is if I was listening to a, an orchestral piece of music or a choral piece of music within my physical and mental vehicle, my body, my energy field. And I'll listen for all that harmonizes with my soul. And you've heard me before. Soul is source of unconditional love. I will surrender all attraction to that which does not support the expansion of my conscious awareness and co-creative evolution. Because this is what humanity is doing. And for me and all of us to continue experiencing humanity, this is an imperative process. I will surrender all attraction to that which does not support the expansion of my conscious awareness and co-creative evolution. Yes, I read it again. Because it's very critical that we understand that we are shifting and changing at an exponential rate and the the time that we have thought of as time the linear time is compressed right now and so it's moving at a much faster pace and in order to keep up we have to listen more deeply lastly but not leastly I will retune my abilities to discern noisy interference from the clear presence of truth and embrace and embody it fully. And so discernment once again comes up in our fields to do, to sort out the chatter, the noise and realize that that exists and it's coming from thousands of lifetimes that are now being set aside as new ones are being created. And those old patterns will not work in the new. And the longer we hold on to the old, the less we'll integrate with the new. And so my beloved brothers and sisters around the world, I, I thank you 
for sharing this moment with me this morning. And um, I love you all dearly. It's a blessing to be here and see you and encourage you as I encourage myself. And I will just open your crown chakra a little more before I leave and bless you. Namaste. Thank <sighs> you.